Oh, man, if you're not cheering, you shouldn't be here. Let's try it again. Welcome to VBS Sunday. If you're joining us by way of Facebook Live, I hope you're cheering just as much. Doesn't matter if your family thinks you're crazy. This is a great day for us because we are celebrating today. But before we celebrate anything, before we do anything, because we have kids in here from, from six years old all the way to 12 years old, so it's just going to be a lot of fun. We're our whole families are in here. But before we get started, we want you to scan that QR code and let us know you're here. Check in right now. Would you please get your phone out? Get your phone out. Make sure you let us know you're here, but also right now, maybe something's heavy on your heart. You can't get it off your mind. Let us know what that prayer request is. We want to pray for you. We're not going to forget about you. We're going to pray for you on Monday. We're going to be praying for you throughout this week. So check in right now. Now, I want to introduce you to our new VBS director and our children's ministry director, Stacy Barrett. Would you put your hands together for Stacy? Hey, everybody. We had such a great week at VBS, and I just wanted to share with you a little bit. We called it Level Up, and the meaning behind that is that we wanted to teach the children each night in their lessons how they can level up, live out their identity in Christ, and it was fantastic. So we're going to show you a little bit about VBS today in our service, and we're going to start with our VBS worship team. So stand with us and sing. It's just going to show you where to go, okay? Hey, Woo! guys. Let's go, let's go. We are so excited to be your VBS worship team. We've already picked out a couple kids to help us out with the motions to teach you guys. They know the song really well because they've been doing it all week. So we're going to go through the first verse and show you the motions. The kids know it, but the parents don't. And we want to see you guys all involved. So it goes, I was made for this. I live for this. God has a reason, reason for my life. I'm going to shout it out. And the kids like to shout right there. Without a doubt, I was born for this, made for a purpose. All right. Does everybody think they can hang out with us? All right, let's do it. You guys ready? I was made for this. I live for this. God has a reason, reason for my life. I'm going to shout it out without a doubt. I was born for this, built for a purpose. Good job.
back to your seat, right, guys.
game begin. Doesn't that look like so much fun? Yeah. We had a great week and we had so much fun. And we are going to ask the Zancudo family to come up now and we're going to demonstrate this game for you. But before we do, I want to introduce my hype guys. So, Mike Girardi and Ryan Barrett. We're our hype guys. They got all the kids good, energetic, and all riled up for me. It might be broken. That's okay, though. <laughs> what are you doing? I was trying to be more hype, but uh, it looks like my electronic device doesn't want to work with me today. Well, I hope Woo! Oh, there it goes. All right. I volunteered to do oh. that, but they said no. All right. Well, we're going to get them started. You guys want to take over, and let's get the boys settled. Well, I think we need to figure out our chant that was our signature. Do you agree with us? Absolutely. All right, can I have all my kids that were involved in VBS stand up for me real quick? All of you, all of you, let's go give them a round of applause. All right, for the parents, this chant's called Two Claps and a Ric Flair. All right? So here's how that goes. All right. Oh, no, that was weak. No. Oh, Show them. Sorry. Show My these bad. people how it's done. Show them. Wow! That, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So now the kids are going to go up against the parents right here, right now, and they best two claps in a Ric Flair challenge. 
So if you are at all, I need all my VBS workers to stand up as well to join these kids because we are a little outnumbered. All right, are we ready? Go ahead. All right, have a seat. Now let's try places. All the others that were sitting down, please rise to your feet. And I mean everybody. I mean everybody. In the back, in the front, balcony, everywhere. Do I need to re-demonstrate or are we good? No, we're good. You go for it. Come Dad, on. Dad, I'm looking at you. One more. Hands out of your pockets, Dad. Come on now. There we go. <laughs> All right. Let's do it together. Ready? <laughs> Whoa! All right. What do we think, Mr. Mike? What do we think? I want to hear the parents about you. All right. Let's go. Ready? Go ahead. That's parents all day. Parents Kids, won. I am so sorry parents to tell won. you, but you guys were completely blown out of the water. All right, are we ready to cheer this I family think we on? Are. All right, ladies and gentlemen, whack-a-mole. The parents will get a hammer. Mike, 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 Mike. Mike. It's these, not the real hammers. Sorry. You can I'm, tell it doesn't have yeah, children. I'm all right. I'm going to so put sorry. that one away. I'll there take that. Go. I'll take that. Thank you. No, Mike. no, no. It's amazing when you brought up a game that you got to hit your children with inflated hammers. How many parents were like, oh, in the name of Jesus, I'll do this. <laughs> they volunteered to bring their own hammers, which, all right, what we're going to do. Children, pop your heads up. In these baskets are both ping pong balls, which are worth 50 points, and these conspicuously look like rats, but they are moles. Moles, which are worth 250 points. Your job is to pop up, grab them, and bring them back down with you. However, if your parent smashes you in the head with the inflatable hammer, inflatable, okay. you have to bop, drop back down. You guys got it? Are you ready? Hold on, hold on. We got to have an audience, don't we? All right, we're going to split it right down the middle. Can I have these people? On this side, cheer for Mr. Victor. Go ahead, give it up for him. And now this side for Miss Abby. I, that's, that's not it for me. Come on now. I can't tell if you're awake or not. It is Sunday morning. Come on! I, I, I'm going to wait until we get some people on their feet cheering and screaming and going crazy. I give you permission in church to go absolutely berserks. All right, Ethan, stand up and show them how it's done, please. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Bryce, I think you need to show your people how it's done. Okay. Now, let's go. All right, are we ready? Oh. <laughs> Are you guys ready? No. Yes, you're ready. On your mark, get set, go! Go, go! <laughs> better at cheering. Thank you. 30 seconds. There we go. Can I hear from Mr. Victor's side? <laughs> Miss Abby's side. 20 seconds. One more time all together. Let's go. Awesome job, guys. Awesome. All right, let's so, see which one of these little moles hey, we have won. Some, we got some stragglers here. Oops, I don't know where that came from. Ooh. Oh, definitely. Definitely right here. Give it up for Miss Abby! Abby! Ladies and gentlemen, give the Zancuders a huge round of applause. The sacrifice hitting your children, that is 
in the name of Jesus. No, awesome. awesome. Even though Team Victor lost, it's okay, whatever. It's okay. I mean, you, obviously Abby's better. It's okay. So was their cheering side. I did have a lot of people stand up. So, I mean, that's, you know, it's okay. It's okay. We're, we'll come back next year, um, and hopefully you guys will have a little more in you. Um, and, um, <laughs> I mean, that's that. Unless you want to prove it to me now that you guys are better. I'm not, I'm not sure. It's okay. I don't think it's so. It's okay. When I mean, parents get a little older, yeah, they I lose mean, a little bit of it. It's fine. We can be okay with that. But, but it's not okay. We had a great week with their kids. Yeah, but it's not okay. <laughs> but it is. No, it's, it's not. It's, it is. See, it's something in me. It's just not okay. It's just not. But the, it's okay. I'll let it go. I'll let okay. it go. He's going to He'll it's be okay. fine. He'll be fine. All right. So this week we had one theme verse that I am going to ask all my kiddos to stand up. Everyone who was here with me for VBS, let's stand up, and I would like us to say this verse nice and loud together, okay? Are you ready? All right, ready? Read it with me. For we, Jesus, unto good works. You. Kiddos, do you have a purpose? Yes, we all have a purpose in Christ, and it doesn't matter how young you are, God can still use you. You know, this week, if we didn't base everything on the foundation of God's Word, it would be in vain. Everything we do for Vacation Bible School is based on God's <clears throat> Word. From the time we, well, we're having fun on stage, we teach kids attitudes, everything. Attitudes what? Everything. Because it is. It's so important to have a good attitude. But they'd sit up and they'd listen and they'd pay attention, especially when we gave the gospel. And we had so many kids come this week. How many kids did? What was our highest day? Highest day was 146. 146. <laughs> For us, that's very exciting. We were so worried because of COVID, what would happen? We just didn't know. Right. I think a lot of churches were questioning, what is the turnout going to be because of COVID? Kids were so excited to get back in church. We just need to get parents excited to get back in church, yeah, right? right? But through it all, it wasn't just about the games and the whack-a-mole and all the races down the aisles. It was about the gospel, giving the truth to these kids. So many kids that are sitting right here heard the truth. Maybe, I don't know, maybe for the first time, some have grown up hearing the truth. But it was at this vacation Bible school we wanted them to understand that you trust Christ with your heart. And we saw 19 kids give their life to Jesus Christ this week. 19 kids. So Miss Stacy is going to be in the back, and she's going to make sure before you leave, if your child is here and they've given their life to Jesus Christ, that they take their next steps. We have a baptism Sunday coming up very soon, and you are very important to us. Every one of you kids that have given your life to Christ, it's important for you to take your next step, and we're going to help you do that. And we have a special gift for you at that table, and they're going to help you take your next steps to follow Jesus Christ. And it's not just baptism. There's so much more involved, and Miss Stacy will help you with that. So why don't we do this? Let's stand to our feet, and let's have a time of prayer and just thank God for what he's done and how God has used Stacy and her team and the, the kids that have come that have accepted Jesus Christ. But let me say this, too. It wasn't just kids giving their life to Christ. There were so many kids that had questions that you just wouldn't believe. They were confused. They were distraught over things that were going on in their home, and we had a time to speak into their lives during our prayer time with our prayer team. And I just want to say thank you, God, for what he's done for our church and how he supplied the needs for Vacation Bible School financially, but also brought in numerically all these kids, and we had an outstanding team that was a part of everything that we've done, and they stood strong behind us, and the kids had fun. Will you pray with me right now? Heavenly Father, we give you glory and praise. And Lord, before we sing praises to you, we want to stop and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, we specifically want to say thank you, God, for the souls that were saved. We want to say thank you, God, for the people that came and labored the all week long to invest in kids' lives. Lord, we had so much fun. But God, if we forget about what it's truly about, then we've missed it. And it's truly about you. 
And I say in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, for giving us the ability to come together in a free country to do what we just done this week, to give glory and praise to you, and thank you for your son Jesus dying on the cross, to give us an opportunity uh, to give our lives to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you stay standing and sing with us, God is so good. Sing this together. Amazing love that welcomes me.
please be seated. Wow, you kids did great singing. We're not used to having voices like you have in this room on Sunday morning. Didn't they do a good job singing with you? <clears throat> well, you know, this week has been very exciting for me uh, because I love speaking to kids. It's my favorite thing to do. Starting Thrive Church is exciting. It's, it's, it's so exciting to see what God is doing and how God is developing things in preparation for Thrive Church. But what I've done in the past, experiencing the, the excitement with the kids and teaching them God's word, it's irreplaceable. I love how God works in the life of children. And God loves children. How many of you kids are in here and you went to vacation Bible school? Raise your hand. All right. Well, I think it's important for us to tell your parents what we talked about all week long. Would you agree with that? That's important. So we're going to help you guys learn just like they learned all week long. But I have to do it a little different. Because every day we used illustrations. We believe illustrations are a necessity when teaching children. Jesus used illustrations. Jesus loved to use parables. But I can't bring all those illustrations up here today, right, kids? Because there were so many of them. And uh, on Monday, we used a, a hammer. And then on Tuesday, we used a magic trick, illusion, where we used cups and different colors to explain what we were talking about, how sin breaks us and how God transforms us. And then Chris spoke on Wednesday, and he was talking about he used a huge beach ball, and he talked about big decisions and little decisions we make. And then the last day, we used the light bulb. But we can't bring all that up here. So I thought I would just use this guy right here to sum it all up, to bring it all together. Who is this? Oh, it doesn't matter if you're 5 or 95. You know who this is. Who is this? Mr. Potato Head. I kind of look like him, just a little bit. I'm starting to be shaped like him, too. I, I can accept that. But Mr. Potato Head is a special guest today because I think Mr. Potato Head is the one illustration we'll use for every day in every subject we talked about throughout Vacation Bible School. We'll bring it all together because in 1952, Mr. Potato Head was introduced. Yes, he is the first toy ever introduced on TV by advertisement. It was actually during the Jackie Gleason show in 1952. And because of that, a million Mr. Potato Heads were sold. Pretty crazy stuff. And back then, Mr. Potato Head didn't look like this. Which brings me to the very first thing we talked about on day one. The first day we talked about we were created by God. And it doesn't matter if you're old or young, you need to completely understand what God's Word says about us, us being created by God. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. It was what? Very good. Yeah, let's try that again. It was what? Yeah, it wasn't just good. I mean, it was very, very good. It was incredible what God did. We used a hammer to illustrate this, how the hammer was unique. And it was designed by a creator to do a specific job. But I want to talk about this guy, because there was a guy named George in 1949 that was digging in his mother's garden, and he found a potato. And while he was in the garden and he found that potato, George came up with the idea for his little sister that he could make the potato into a person. So he put together little fabrics and put a little scarf on there. He made a little hat and made little eyes. And then, boom, he created Mr. Potato Head. And he never knew, just by digging in the garden, that he would become a millionaire off of Mr. Potato Head. But it didn't start off like this. It didn't even start off like this. It actually started off when they sold it in 1952, like that. Just a bunch of parts. He put all the parts together and he said, now that we've caught on to the idea of what this can become, let's sell it. And so they would put this in a box and then ask parents to provide this 
Well, at that time, it was fruit and vegetables. You could use either. Mr. Potato Head could have been a banana. It didn't matter. But the creator had an idea to put together Mr. Potato Head, and every one of them looked different. In the very beginning, they didn't look very good. Uh, they actually looked very disturbing. <laughs> That's the original Mr. Potato Head. Uh, so they put all these parts together, and every kid could design and create their own potato head, right? It, it just it doesn't look as cool as this one. I mean, this one has a dent in his head. If you go bald, pray to God that you don't have a dent in your head because it doesn't look good. But there was a creator. And God is our creator. God created us to know him and to serve him. And we taught the kids the importance of understanding to know God is not a head knowledge. It's a heart knowledge. It's believing in the heart. It's understanding and knowledge there is one God. There's only one way. There's not multiple ways into heaven. There's one way, and it's through Jesus Christ. And when he explained to the kids, to know God is to believe in God with your heart. Big difference between the mind and the heart. Right, kids? And then we said we were created to know God, but also to serve him. Because this is a cool thing. Mr. Potato Head has design. The Bible says we have design. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Let me just make it simple for you. Fearfully just means you have purpose. Wonderful means you are unique. Every Mr. Potato Head is going to be unique and different. You know why? Because kids create different ones. Different ideas come to their mind and they're like, I think I'll put his ear way up here. Well, it doesn't look that good, but to the creator, he thought it was great. For whatever reason, my creator thought it would be good for me to lose my hair by 12 years old. But he knew I would love it and I would never go back to hair. My creator knew what he was doing. It's great. Call me Mr. Potato Head, but I love the design. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I have purpose and I am unique. But there's a problem. You know what the problem is? Day two, we talked about it. We're broken by sin. How many kids remember us talking about being broken by sin? Raise your hand. See, we're broken by sin, so God had to transform us and make us new. We used the illustrations of cups and a teapot. And it was a magical teapot, an illusion, where we'd pour water into the teapot. The teapot would pour water into the cup, and in that cup there would be a color that appeared that wasn't just clear water. The first one was blue. Because we wanted kids to understand that Adam blew it. Yes, that's easy to remember, right? Adam blew it. Because the Bible tells us in Romans 5, 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Thank you, Adam. All us men right now could have six packs and a full head of hair. But you messed everything up. Because sin passed on to all men, and all have sinned. Adam blew it. And then I poured water in the next cup, and the cup the water in that cup became very dirty, magically. <laughs> What's the point? We have to deal with it. Adam blew it. We have to deal with it. And it's dirty and it's ugly. And it's called sin. Because sin passed upon all men. That word men means everybody. Man, woman, and child. We all have to deal with it. Said this morning in first service, that means when you pass 40 years old, you start noticing aches and pains where you shouldn't have aches and pains. You know? I always said, I'll never, gray, I'll never have gray hair. And then around 38 years old, I looked in the mirror, and I looked at m my beard. I think it was maybe, I didn't even have a beard then. It was just, just a little bit. But I could still see a little bit in that gray coming through. And then I realized, hey, I am getting gray here. I am growing old. It's happening right in front of my face. And then, then by the time I was 40, I saw some wrinkles. I'm like, this is unacceptable. I will Google some, something, something has to be out there that I can find and purchase and smear upon my face so I can look beautiful. It's all lies and gimmicks. Nothing will take away those wrinkles. Yes, we're stuck with it, kiddos. You know why? Because Adam blew it. Now we have to deal with it, and sin has corrupted the body. Which brings me to Mr. Potato Head. He was a cool idea until the government stepped in because they realized there's a problem. It is not safe for kids to walk around with rotten <laughs> potatoes. Kids love their Mr. Potato Head. I love him, mother. Don't take him away from me. I love my potato head. 
but he's falling apart. There's flies on him. Don't take Mr. Potato Head. His eyes are falling out. Why? Because he was rotten. And then they realize, the government said, we can't do this. If you're going to produce a toy, it has to be safe. So they said, well, back to the drawing board. So they came up with this, a plastic potato that doesn't rot and decay. God has a plan for our lives. Adam blew it. We have to deal with it. Jesus died to fix it. That's when I poured water into another cup and it turned red. Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood. Why? Because God committeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He said, I don't want you to have a rotten, corrupt life. I have a purpose for you. You were created to know me, to love me, to serve me. I designed you with a purpose. And sin broke us. But Jesus came to fix it because we can't fix ourselves. And then the last one, I poured the water into a cup and it was clear. It was clear because Jesus came to forgive us of it. He wants to wash our sins away. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I was able to take the clear water and the dirty water and tell the kids, now the last step is all you have to do is believe it. And dump the clear water into the dirty water and the dirty water, whoo, magically it became clear. But it's not magic with Jesus. It's called forgiveness. You see, Jesus loves us just the way we are. He designed us. He created us. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. But sin creeps in and it's corrupted us because Adam blew it. And we have to deal with it. But God's son came to fix it. And because of that, Jesus will forgive us of it. All we have to do is believe it. And then everything changes. We are made to be a new creature in Christ. The word creature just means new person. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Which brings me to day three. Where we explain to the kids, because you're, in, in your, you're a, a member of the family of God, this is who you are in Christ. You are a child of God, and he is your father. You are not just a normal person. You're above that. You are special because you now are in the family of God. Now, physically, it looks the same maybe as any other kid. But inside, it's not normal because Jesus lives within you. He saved you. He has a purpose for you. And Chris taught on the, the idea that we have big decisions and little decisions. And the biggest decisions we have, the decision we have, is to give our life to Christ. And when we give our life to Christ, this is who we are. We are now a child of God. This is Mr. Potato Head. He was created with a purpose to make people happy. Kids loved him for years and years, and still today they love him. He was designed with a purpose. He was unique. And his purpose was not just to exist, but to continue on to help other generations know the joy of having Mr. Potato Head in their life. But through it, things got broken and messed up, and they had to go from this to this and redesign. This right here is who he is. We as Christians are alive in Christ. I am a child of the king. He lives in me. He has a purpose for me. In 2021, there was a decision made about Mr. Potato Head, and it's kind of disturbing. And it's the same thing that our kids are dealt with, deal with every day of their life. And the decision was, you are no longer Mr. Potato Head. You're just Potato Head. We're going to change it. See, what happens is... Kids come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The broken sin that's in their life, God transforms them. And this is who they are now in Christ. They are a child of the King. They have purpose and a reason for being here. And because they're a child of the King, he says, this is who you say I am. I shouldn't be depressed, anxious, overwhelmed, or worried. I am a child of the King, and I should be glad of that. We taught kids that. But the world is always whispering in their ear, no, 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 no. You're not what God says you are. You're what we say you are. This is the way you should look. And then we remove moral law. Whatever you want to be is what you should be. Think it and you are it. What happened to science? We all love science. Science is clear. We know what God created us to be. 
I am so glad we have little boys that came to Vacation Bible School and played games because they are unique. And we had to do a field just for those boys because they were crazy because boys are different. And then we had the girls field and they played big ball and they're like, ah, and they were falling over and some are oh, going at it. It just depends on their personality. But I learned this. I have a boy and a girl and they're unique and they're different. And I am glad because God made them. He's, they're fearfully and wonderfully made. And as a Christian, I want them to be proud of what God made them to be. They're alive in Christ. So the world starts saying, hey, I think it would look like a lot better, Mr. Potato, if you went here and this. Ah, let's just do that and let's do this and that, that and that. Well, it kind of works, kind of looks like a mouth, but this is what, this is not what he was meant to be. This is not who Mr. Potato was meant to be. Well, I want them to be this way. And the world starts putting ideas in our kids' heads, and our kids start feeling defeated. They start looking at things online and going, oh, I wish I was skinnier. I wish I was taller. I've always wished I was taller, but guess what? I'll never be taller. I'll never be taller. But that's okay, because I love it. I go to areas and I walk straight through and never hit my head. It's amazing. But this is what God made me to be. And because I'm alive in Christ, I know God has a purpose for me. And my purpose is different than other people's. I'm unique. I'm designed for a reason. And the number one reason I am here is to please Jesus Christ with my life. I am a child of the King. I am who he said I am. This is Mr. Potato Head. He was meant to be Mr. Potato Head. I'm Dave Liuzzo. I gave my life to Jesus Christ when I was 14. I was broken by sin and transformed by God. And after that, who I am in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, according to 2 Corinthians 5.17. And because of that, I can trust his word to know what he meant for me to be. Whether you're a boy or a girl, God has a purpose for your life. And the number one reason you're here is to know him, to accept him, to have him in your life, to lead you and guide you. Never let Satan whisper in your ear. And then on day four, we closed it out with living out our identity. I am who you say I am. This is who we are in Christ. But day four, we had to make the kids really understand that it's more than just existing. It's more than going through life doing Snapchat snapping all day. It's more than just laying around watching TV. You have a purpose, and God wants you to fulfill that purpose. And that purpose, we use the illustration of a light bulb, is to light up the world. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, in Matthew, it tells us what that means. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, we are the light of the world. Living out our identity means to be a bright light. We're the light of the world. We told the kids it's important to be a Christian. It's what God wants for your life. But he wants you to shine bright. And the closer we get to Jesus, the brighter our light is. We use the basket, as the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, and put it over that light bulb on stage and showed the kids that sin hinders us from being a bright light. And let me tell every mom, dad, grandparent here, sin hinders your life just the same. You cannot be an effective mom and dad and, and, and uncle and aunt and, and grandparent if you allow sin to dim your light, how are you going to be an example for the children in your life if you have sin hindering you? I said this this morning. Our kids are watching us, right? They're watching us. I had to confess this morning. I may as well confess right here on Facebook for the whole world to know. I love monster drinks. Yes, I do. And my kids do too. How many love energy drinks? Would you raise your hand? They're bad for you. Half of you are not raising your hand. You're lying. I bet you drink them. I bet you do. So I told Ellie and Christian, I said, no more monsters. They're bad. They have bad stuff in them. And they're like, what about you, Dad? That's how my kids talk. What about you, Father? And I said, <laughs> I said, Christian, I don't know where you got your accent from, but Dad is going to give up monster drinks too. I only drink one. And I always have to say stuff to, you know, to make it sound like mine is okay. I do the hydro. First ingredients is water, but I'll give it up if you want me to give up water. 
It has vitamins in it. Dad needs vitamins. I'm getting old, but fine, I'll give it up. Well, I was weak the other day. I used Chris, Chris Andrews, Pastor Chris. He likes the same drink I like. So I was at the gas station, and I saw it, and it was just calling me. It was just calling me. And it was on sale, two for six dollars. I said, that is a deal. I'm going to get one for Chris. And then Satan whispered in my ear, what about you? They're two for six dollars. You should get two of them. Well, I'll get two for Chris, or maybe one for me. So I brought it home, and I hid it in my fridge at my house. Guess who cleaned out the refrigerator? Ellie did. She goes, Dad, what is this? What is this? Like I'm an alcoholic. I said, look, I bought one for Chris. They were two for six dollars. And I just, I don't know, I just messed up. And she goes over to the sink. And I'm like, please don't do that. Please. We are to be good stewards of God's money. And she starts the pour. And I, I really did this. I said, stop, 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 stop. Listen. And I got a little cup out and said, I'll give you some. <laughs> I really did that. I said, I'll give you some. And she said, Dad, you have to be the example. <laughs> I said, I know, I know, I know. And she left. And I put it back in the fridge. It's in there right now. <laughs> I know I'm a horrible person. I'm weak. I need energy. The point is, we've got to practice what we preach. But too often we're hiding things. We're covering our light because we have hidden sin in our life. God woke me up about four months ago so heavy on my heart about this topic of hidden sin. And that night I wrote a whole message at three in the morning on hidden sin. And I know God's going to lead me to preach that soon. But that's what it is in our life. We hide things and it dims our light. And we're not living out our identity. And the kids learned this week, we are the light of the world. We're brighter as we get closer to Jesus. Just like Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 says, it's like a city on a hill with all those lights and you can see it afar. Flying into California at night, I could see all the lights. You could see it so far away. Jesus wants us to be a light like that. We are meant to shine so that others can see Jesus in us. That's our purpose and that's what Matthew chapter 5, verse 15 says. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We weren't made to be the average. This isn't it, the average Mr. Potato Head. You say, it's a Mr. Potato Head. It's not average. This is a special, unique, one-of-a-kind Mr. Potato Head. Because this Mr. Potato Head is a jumbo Mr. Potato Head. It's a special order Mr. Potato Head, and it's a clear Mr. Potato Head. He's unique. He's special. And just like this potato head is special, and right now it's shining bright because of the transparency, we are to do the same. We have to be the brightest light for the world to see. If we don't teach our children this, then our next generation's in trouble. What's in store for us in the future is not looking good. It's not looking bright. We were meant to shine. This week was the most important week for some of these kids' lives. They learned they were created by God, but broken by sin. If they accept Jesus Christ, they can be transformed by God and made who God meant them to be, who Jesus says we are. And then they can live out their identity and shine bright. I want you to bow your head for just a minute and close your eyes before we go any further and the reason I ask you to close your eyes is because the kids in here I'm asking the kids for just a minute can you close your eyes for me we have all kinds of kids in here we have little ones we have tall ones we have some that don't know how to be quiet and we have some that are always quiet you're unique you're different and that's okay you were created by God to know him to serve him you have purpose you're fearfully and wonderfully made you're unique and your mom and dad are the same way. Mom, dad, I want to speak directly to you. And you that are joining us by way of Facebook, I'm speaking directly to you. You're not here just to exist. To feed the hole in your head and go to bed. You are here for much more than that. God created you for a purpose. And though sin broke us, God can reform us. 
He can transform us and create us into something new. Who we are in Christ is special as a believer. And it is our opportunity to change the world by being the light. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to be a light for your children, for your grandchildren? Are you ready to make a difference in the world? I'm going to ask you the same way I asked the kids this week. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you've given your life to Jesus, and you're not ashamed. If you're a child, I'm talking to you. If you're an adult, I'm talking to you. If you're not ashamed, would you raise your hand really high? You're a believer in Jesus. You've given your life to Christ. You're not ashamed. Good, good, good. You may put your hand down. Here's the next question. If you've never given your life to Christ, here's an opportunity right where you're at. You don't have to come to the front. You don't have to do no ritual. It's simple. It's like this. There's something missing in your life. It's empty. And you've been probably trying to figure out how to fill that emptiness, and you don't know what to do. I'll tell you what to do. Give your life to Jesus. Let him change you. Because you were meant to shine. So if you're here right now and you say, Dave, Pastor Dave, I do not have Jesus Christ in my life. But I am asking you to pray for me. Because I need to give my life to Christ. With heads bowed, nobody's looking. Would you simply raise your hand and say, that's me, pray for me. Pray for me. Would you raise your hand high? I see a couple of hands. I'm going to tell you what I did. And even if you didn't raise your hand, but you're thinking on this, I'm going to tell you. When I was 14 years old, I was in Resaca, Georgia. And I remember how clear it was to me that I needed Jesus in my life. And I prayed and I asked Jesus simply by saying, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need you. I know there is only one God, and his name is Jesus. And I believe that Jesus lived, died, and rose again, and I'm putting my faith and trust in you. In my own words, with my heart, I trusted in Jesus. I gave him my life. And right now in your seat, if you've never done that, I'm asking you personally to ask Christ in your life. Right now. In your own words from your heart, because you can think on God, but if you don't believe in God with your heart, then it's all in vain. It doesn't work that way. Will you ask Christ in your life? If you're a child, would you just simply say, God, forgive me. I want you to come in my life. I believe in you. I believe you are the Son of God, that you lived, you died, and rose again. And I'm asking you to save me. And if you've prayed, and you're praying right now, and you've done that, we have an opportunity for you to talk with us in Connecting Point. It's a location just down the hallway that we're going to meet with you and talk with you about some of these things. We just want to meet with some of our new guests that are with us. But please, right now, give your life to Christ. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we commit this service to you because on our own, we're lost. We're broken. We have no direction. But you designed us for a purpose, and we don't want to miss that purpose. We know you want us to know you to serve you. You want to transform our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, help us to never forget who we are in you. We are the children of God. We love you, Lord. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, help us all, from the parents to the grandparents to the children, to be a light to those in darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. You may look this way. Man, you kids did so well listening. Would you give them a big hand, please? Right now, we want to recognize those that did an outstanding job with Scripture memory. So I'm going to set some things over to the side here, Mr. Potato Head. And uh, we're going to call out some names. And when we do this, it's very important for us to cheer as loud as we possibly can because these kids have worked so hard, have they not? I'm going to help you bring this down. Miss Stacy has a list of our first, second, and third place winners of those that have done an outstanding job of scripture memory during our competition. But we would never close things out without giving some really sweet things away. So how many like free stuff? Raise your hand. Yes. So Stacy, let's right. find out who won. All right. So in our scripture memory, six and seven year olds, in third place, we had a three-way tie. We had Charlie Heiser. Come on up. Max Zancudo. 
and Andy Grace Olden were third place. They each said 80 points worth. Come on, Come on up, up here, buddy. I'm going to let Miss Stacy grab that for you. How many of you have brought kids this week to Vacation Bible School? Would you raise your hand real high? You brought your kids this week? How many of you have encouraged your kids to do what these kids just did and memorize Scripture? I'm so glad you did because we're to hide of God's Word in our hearts. Would you give them a big hand, please? Now, it doesn't matter if they're 6 years old or 12 years old, every one of them seemed to go above and beyond to learn Scripture and memorize the verses that were in their Scripture memory book. So, as we announce these next names, I want you to put your hands together for them as they come down and cheer as loud as you can. And even if you're on Facebook Live, you can cheer too. It's fun. It's okay. Your neighbors might think you're weird if you're anywhere outside. Okay, that was just, yeah, that was just third place. So, second place was Evangeline Bell. They're getting a certificate and a Target gift card. Good job. And in first place, Stevie Joy Woo! Alden. <laughs> She's quick. Oh, running down Woo! here. Great job, Stevie. Give her another right. big hand, would you please? All right. In our eight to nine-year-old department, in third place is Ben Tarr. All right, Nicholas, you gonna come pick it up for Ben? Are you picking it up for him? Or well, we're gonna give you a big hand too. Let's give him a big hand. Good job, Nicholas. All right, don't spend it, all right? In second place is Kayla Dunsmore. She won't be here today. She won't be here. Hey, she's not here, but she might be watching on Facebook. Let's do it one more time. Big cheer. And in first place, she is also, they left for vacation this morning, Avery Patrick. Okay, in our 10 and 11 year old department, third place, Abby Walter. Second place, Jace Sinclair. And in first place, Braden Dunsmore. Oh, Keep clapping on. for Jace, come on. Come on, buddy, here you go. Don't let your mom have that target right. card, that's yours. All right, so we'll make sure that those other kiddos get theirs on Wednesday when they come for cadets. The next big thing is this box. So this was our mystery box. The children would earn tickets for saying scripture, bringing a friend, those good behavior during games, and then they were putting them in a raffle for this box. So the winner for this box is Jack McMunn. Jack's getting a $25 Get Air gift card and just about one of everything that was in our store out there for the week. All right, and then our family drawing. So our family drawing, you guys are getting passes to the zoo and a $50 Visa oh, gift yeah. card to help cover your lunches and expenses. And it's going to Jen German. <laughs> is she in here? Is Jen in here? I don't believe she is. I'll take it. That's all all right. right, we'll give it to you, Jen. <laughs> I'll give it to her. All right, so I couldn't let this week go by without doing a little extra for our volunteers. So if you were, if you registered to volunteer, your name is in my Skittles box, and I've got some gift cards for you. So here we go. Carrie Meter. Here. Ah, uh, she's all the way in the back. Carrie, I'm gonna run down and meet you, okay? Let's give her another big hand. Tasha Hunter. I think Tasha may have left her vacation this morning. We'll make sure she gets... I keep drawing that one. A blank one, there's... Another blank one, sorry. Jennifer Cox. Her husband's gonna pick it up for her. Amazon. One more big hand for her. She's not. Oh, All right. right oh, okay. 
Liz Eiselstein, is she in here? Oh no. All right. Stephen Douglas. Woo, Stephen! He's in the balcony. Stephen, you don't have to come down. We'll set it aside for you. One more big hand for Stephen in game All time. All right, our last one. All right, this is a teenager. I'm going to butcher her last name. Emma Orzachowski. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Emma was out helping with our games this week. Thank you, Emma. All right, thank you to everybody that helped make last week a huge success. Let's put our hands together one more time for our volunteers. It takes nearly 100 volunteers to pull this off, and every one of them did an outstanding, outstanding job. I want to specifically say thank you to our teens, the energy, everything you put into it outside during the outdoor games. You did amazing. Would you put your hands together for them? And of course, everybody had such a unique job to do. I want to say this before we close. It, one of the hardest things to do is transition. But it's an incredible thing to transition with somebody that you've worked with for years and years. So Ms. Stacy Barrett, as she transitioned to the position of the children's director and was taken on Vacation Bible School, she began to put it together according to what she thought and had creativity with her team and ideas. And I've learned over the years before Pastor Tony and even before uh, the, the ones we're talking about 40 years of different directors and so forth, each one creative and different, but with the same goal to see children come to know Jesus Christ. And I am so grateful that Stacy Barrett's passion is for children to come to know Jesus Christ. So I want you to put your hands together for Stacy. She did a great job this week. And you're going on vacation. <laughs> so <laughs> Izzy, come on out here real quick. We want to just give you a little gift for your vacation. Not the flowers, they'll be dead before you go probably, <laughs> but that's all right. Thank you. So let's give her a big hand for all she's done. Thank so you. we forgot one, I forgot one thing. So every year we do a Penny Wars. And Dave, if you'll grab that, it's checked yes. behind there. So this year we designated our earnings from the offering competition to Brock Strong Foundation out of Canal Winchester that helps do a lot of great things for the families when they have children going through tough times at Children's Hospital. And I believe they've even done some things for Pastor Tony and Jenny with, while they're there with Logan. But our children raised $750 for the Brock Strong Foundation. Thank you. Pastor Chris. All right, that was fun, wasn't it? A little different on Sunday, but different is good. That was exciting. Listen, I just want to give you a couple next steps. If you are here and you are part of our church family on a normal basis, I want to ask you right now, if you haven't already, to check in on the Church Center app and let us know how we can pray for you. And listen, if you're here and this was your very first time, maybe you came because your kids were here for VBS, we want to be a part of your life. We want to meet you uh, right after this. Uh, as soon as we go, we have a room called Connecting Points right near our Welcome Center entrance. Come back there and see us. Pastor Dave will be back there. I'll be back there. Uh, we do have some fresh baked cookies. You bring the kids on back. And uh, we want to meet you. If there's anything we can do for you, that's, that's why we're here. We, we say we're a family because we support one another. Also, uh, we have a connection card that you can fill out. If you just scan the code on the back of your chair, you can uh, download the Church Center app. You can click a link there. There's many ways to get there. Uh, follow the instructions on screen. Also, if you're watching online, you could do this. Let us know how we can pray for you. One of the things that we do on Monday mornings as a staff is we sit down, and the very first thing before we start getting our to-do list going and looking at our calendars is we pray and we uh, go over the cares of what's going on in this church and our church family. And we want to pray for you. It doesn't matter how small that you may think it is or how big it is. We want to pray for you and just know how we can support you. So let us know. Uh, fill out that connection card. And uh, we, we would love you to do that. Um, this coming Wednesday, we are back to our normal Wednesday schedule. I know we've changed things up a bit. Uh, we have two classes for adults. One is in here called Elephant in the Room. Uh, we also have our uh, Family Fixer Upper in the Fellowship Hall. 
Wednesday, we're back at Cadets for Christ, 7 p.m. That's for the kids. And we also have uh, classes for teenagers, uh, real life. And all that is at 7 p.m. So if you come on 7, uh, at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, we have something for everybody. So please bring your family. If you have never been for a Wednesday night, we'd love to have you come. Uh, one more thing, and this is how we're going to close. Uh, today is Pastor Tony's birthday. And if you're watching, Pastor Tony, we love you. Uh, we appreciate you, and uh, we, we're praying for you. Uh, the one thing Pastor Tony asked for for his birthday, if, you're, if you follow him online, is he said, pray for God to heal my son. And so that's how we're going to close this service out. And I, so I'm going to pray up here. I'm going to ask you in your seat to pray. Uh, if you don't know what's going on, uh, Logan, our son's, uh, our pastor's 18-year-old son, he's, uh, he has cancer. And he just found out about this a few weeks ago. There's a mass in his chest, and he's gone through his second round of chemo. And we're praying that God would shrink that cancer and make it go away. That's our prayer, that God would heal Logan. So I'm going to pray, and please, you pray in your seat uh, for Logan. God, we're coming to you, and we just say collectively, thank you for what you did through Vacation Bible School. God, I thank you for every child here in this room that trusted you as their Savior this week. For every child that came and learned about you, I pray you'd bless them and help them. And uh, God, as they follow you in their life, God, please help them. But Lord, as we close our service, we're praying for Logan, and we ask for Logan that you would heal his body. God, we pray this together. We're in agreement for this that you would make that cancer go away. We're asking you, would, whether you use the chemo to shrink it and, and make it go away, or you're pr preparing his body for a surgery soon, or God, you just can make it disappear. God, we're praying for a complete healing for Logan, and we thank you for this. And we pray it all together in Jesus' name, amen. And we want to thank you for coming. Y'all have a great day. You're dismissed.